Uh, yes and then some. I would say that um, I think Saints Row 2 solidified its identity of being over-the-top gameplay. Yeah. We wanted to take that theme and that vision and prescribe it to everything, the whole experience. So and I don't mean to interrupt you now, but there's already mayhem going on right now. There's, you know, indiscriminate punching in the groin. One of the great things about the open world <laughs> games is the sandbox gameplay. And our philosophy with the whole over the top is, uh, you know, why um, let players just punch pedestrians when you can like take them down by flying, you know, flying takedowns <laughs> and punching them in the nuts. And then strike a pose afterwards, which is yeah. really what makes it. Uh, it, there's a certain unique blend of humor that is uh, very um, indicative of the franchise. and uh, it's, It certainly comes off very well, we think, in this third iteration. And just one of the things that makes it such a delightful mayhem. Now, what we're watching here is some is you know a big length of excellent B-roll you guys have brought by. So we're going to sort of, you know, if, if you folks have questions on what's going on, Greg's <laughs> happy to answer them, you know. If you want to know how, why did he just have giant fist? What was that blue dangly thing that he just put away? Well, the whole philosophy is like, why give players a baseball bat when you can give them a giant phallic weapon? It's yeah. a lot more fun, again, hitting the over-the-top theme, fits in the universe. Some fun physics at yeah. play, too. Well, coming up here, here's something great. We'd be like This section of the city is owned by the Luchador. It's one of three gangs of the antagonist in the game. Well, first, we're actually going to, you know, um, Meet with some of the citizens of Steel. Just have a there. local dance off. Yeah, we've got. Because you, know, you don't always want to punch someone until they explode. Sometimes you want to dance. Right, right when they look like that. But you get a reward <laughs> if you take these guys out. And then you could do it with an AK 47, but let's do it with uh, calling in an airstrike. <laughs> you know, Who it, says close air support is just for military you know conflicts? It, it's like this is we're giving players these types of weapons from the very beginning of the game. We think it fits, it, it's, it's, it's fun. So right out the gate, people aren't going to have to wait too long to start going crazy. Correct. I mean, it's like the start of Saints from the Third, the Saints are at the top of their game. I mean, they're well-known celebrities. And they've licensed out their image on lunch boxes, bobbleheads, tennis shoes, energy drinks. So they've got all this money and power. And contextually, this is for design. It makes sense that we can give players these airstrikes and fun weapons right from the get-go. Uh -huh. Sandbox gameplay is more fun when you have fun toys to play in. That's so, absolutely true. And when you can just pick up and get to that fun stuff, you don't have to wait a whole lot of huge long time. Now, there will, I presume there will be some kind of progress throughout. You will get access to different stuff or, you know, new areas. What? Talk to me about how the game changes as you play. Right, okay, so um, the, the basic backstory is that there's this group called the Syndicate. The Syndicate is, is made up of three gangs, you know, so they are a conglomeration of very powerful gangs. gangs. They ask the Saints to join them. The Saints say, no way, we want to be by ourselves. That creates the initial conflict. They kidnap the Saints, who bust out of their private jet and land in their city. It's called Steelport. Mm -hmm. Saints Row the Third takes place in a completely new city called Steelport. And the main setup is like, okay, the Saints were lost in Steelport. They need to figure out who the Syndicate are and take them out and show the world that the Steelport belongs to the Saints, not, not the Syndicate. And now while we're talking about Steelport, we actually have a question coming in from Edwin in Orlando who wants to know about the relative size of Steelport versus Stillwater, the location for Saints Row 2. Yeah, I get a lot of questions about city size. It's always been interesting for me. We never set out in saying it needs to be X miles by X miles square. For us, with the new tech, it's been like, does the city feel right for the game? Yep. We didn't want to like create um, a city based on New York and retrofit gameplay in there. We had our level designers and our artists working together and make sure that the space that we created complemented the gameplay. So I honestly don't know how big it is. I will tell you that it's certainly big enough. You're going to see here there's flying vehicles that can fly through it, and they're going to have more than enough area to explore. Excellent. Now, uh, we've got one player playing right now in the B-roll, but one of the great things about Saints Row 2 was drop-in, drop-out cooperative play. Right. Is that come, making a comeback in the third? Absolutely. We think that that model was, um, you know, press and players alike really liked it. Seamless drop-in, drop-out. Come in when any time you want. We're not messing with it. Um, we're making sure that that is definitely a standout feature in Saints Row the Third. And so, so far we've seen tanks. We've seen this hot car here. Uh, Luke from Wales wants to know if helicopters are back. We have helicopters. It's very fortuitous oh. that this question <laughs> came in here right now. This what a is, timely question, yeah. Luke. We, if driving's not your thing, we got flying vehicles. This is a VTOL, vertical takeoff and landing, equipped with laser beams heat-seeking missiles. The great thing is you can switch between hover and jet. Who wants a helicopter when you can have the stag VTOL right. jet? Look, press of a button, you'll go right into jet mode here. 
thing's incredibly fun to fly. And so are we getting a glimpse now with these skyscrapers in the background of just how big Steelport is? Yeah, exactly. That gives you the, that, that's a skyline. Those are the hero buildings. These are those those really tall hero buildings. Each one is owned by a, a gang in the syndicate. You know, and what's great and as far as customization goes, um, as you progress through the game, you'll be able to customize your own section of the city skyline, create your own stronghold, so you can create your own super skyscrapers at the edge of the island. Oh, excellent! Yep. And now. If you're creating your own skyscraper, do you have any um, artistic direction over those, perhaps to make them inspired by a favorite melee weapon? <laughs> no. <laughs> well, I, I think certain age, grade, age uh, ratings groups would think we were pushing things a little too far there. So the important thing is, is like you're able to select the different sizes as well as um, we're combining function and form. So you'll get like a helicopter pad as part of your upgrade. Uh, your <laughs> and now we're getting a couple of questions about, you know, how many different kinds of vehicles are in there. And we've talked about a couple, but then. To see these preposterous get-ups, I mean, it seems almost the question is, you know, hard to answer because what is now? What is this giant cannon on the back of this? This is this is Professor Genki's super ballistic manifold. You can suck up pedestrians and then <laughs> shoot them out. And uh, <laughs> Professor Genki's is a persona in the Steelport. In, yep. in, in uh, Steelport, he um, runs an underground activity called Professor Genki's Super Ethical Reality Climax Show. This is one of his vehicles. You can suck yourself up and shoot yourself out as well as your co-op partner. These are the type of like over-the-top weapons that uh, we think are very unique, not only to other video games, but even Saints Row's 1 and 2. Yeah, I, I can't say that a, a portable human catapult with a Cheshire